This is Dr. Rusho. I'm here with Robert, and uh, Robert was a really interesting case. Came in with um, pre-diagnosed with SIBO and, and had a pretty progressed case of it. And when you had come in, what, what were some of the, the chief symptoms that you were having? I know weight loss was one of the big right. ones. Right. I think the, the major symptom was uh, what I'd call uh, constant stomach discom dis discomfort right. and uh, belching. Right. Yeah. And yep. uh, really. Pressure in my stomach is where the major With that symptoms burp I had. Yeah, 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 right. And uh, it was uh, it, it at various times was very severe. Sure. Uh, so, so yeah, that when, when you came in, it was kind of your your typical presentation of SIBO, where the weight loss was getting to a point where he was getting concerned about it, and a lot of uh, upper GI discomfort. And, and SIBO, for those of you who don't uh, understand, is, is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's where the bacteria in the colon can overgrow into the intestines and cause um, bloating, gas, constipation, loose stools, um, burping, um, bloating, pain, things like that. And, and also weight loss if it gets, because uh, it can actually damage the intestinal lining and interfere with nutrient absorption. So he had come in and, and you had kind of been through a whole bunch of right, right. endoscopies through, through both ends and, and testing it. And he had had a, a good workup and you had had some response, but you weren't really all the way there, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure I got to a point where I felt like I was uh, in control of it, but I was pretty much at wit's end because I think I did every test known to man, <laughs> yeah. and some of them twice, and a couple of them with the so-called experts in the field. And, right. uh, so I was uh, diagnosed as uh, creating a lot of excess methane gas, Sure. and that was the primary culprit for the discomfort. Right. So methane production was, was the element that we couldn't get a handle on. Sure, sure. And, and that's usually SIBO will, will present as, as one of two ways, either a, a hydrogen predominant, a methane predominant, or a mixed type. Um, and so that was you know methane predominance what we saw with Robert. And um, we built upon some of the stuff he had done in the past. We went through a course of herbal antibiotics to help uh, beat down the methane SIBO a little bit more. Uh, also, I think one of the key things for you was using the hydrochloric acid because I, I don't think you were making nearly enough hydrochloric acid. And he had a lot of burping. And a lot of times burping um, and, and gas in the upper half of the intestinal tract is an issue of not having enough hydrochloric acid. And if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, that can actually feed SIBO. And some of the studies have shown that if you use, uh, use long-term acid suppressing medication, that's one of the risk factors for SIBO. So we were kind of looking at that in the, in the opposite, where we needed to get more acid in the stomach. Um, that combined with, we, we did find Epstein-Barr virus was reactivated, as well as another bacteria in conjunction with that. So we had, you know, this one we kind of had to work with it. Some, right. some, some yeah, cases it are quick, but this one we, we had to work at it for a little bit, and we, we had a fairly intensive um, middle stage of therapies there where we were using a lot of different antimicrobials and, and different things. But um, you put on some weight, which has been yeah, about, about yeah. 10 pounds now? Yeah, I'd lost about 30 pounds and got uh, 10 of it back, and I've sort of plateaued it. Uh, and I still need a little bit more weight, but uh, uh, I seem to be getting, getting back to what I right, should be. Right. And then the, the GI distress is uh, much they, less? They're much less. Uh, I do have to watch what I eat. I continue to watch what I eat. And, Trying to balance the uh, and very, yeah, acid uh, and, and very very FODMAP sensitive, which is right, something that right. um, can be an important part of, of managing, um, especially kind of an, a, a, a chronic form of SIBO, is just trying to limit the FODMAP foods because the FODMAP these high FODMAP foods feed it. I think you found that firsthand yeah, where you're trying yeah. to test the waters and it hasn't gone too well. Right, you, you, you do, and then you know you shouldn't. Right, and uh, but sometimes you got to do it before you know that it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. doesn't work. You got to burn know? your hand on the stove exactly. a few times. Exactly. Um, exactly. Cool. So yeah, I think that's yeah. a pretty good synopsis. Yeah. Where yeah. you know. Yeah, we're sort of in a uh, in a maintenance uh, mode right now, and hopefully uh, uh, we keep tweaking it until we get the right combination. So yeah, yeah. And I think we got we got you pretty much out of the woods. A, a few little tweaks going forward for Robert, but. Um, you know, luckily we got some weight back on. Right. We got most of the, the chief symptoms out of out of there, and a um, couple little things maybe that we can we can get going in the future. But I think overall you you've done really well, and I'm, yeah. I'm happy to see yeah. that that we were able to help you. Right. Good. Well, thank you for talking right. to us. Okay.